Greetings to you all. Welcome to another exciting episode of the School of Imageability podcast, episode number three. Please today welcome my guest, who happens to be my colleague also, who is Hotso. Welcome, Hotso. Uh, hi, Richmond. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you, Richmond, for making me a part of this podcast and um, hoping that I can impart enough knowledge or enough perspective and experience about my 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 beliefs and how I see the world work. My first question is, how would you define the relationship between threat vending and human beliefs in the city of Johannesburg? I believe it as a, um, a thing of culture, whereas not culture as in, uh, you know, uh, tribalism no I mean as in how we do things because um, I believe there's a certain status quo that that we ha- we believe that we must uh, take up space and use it to the best of our abilities now in that w- that's where street vending comes in whereas street vending we see it as a, a very huge huge input especially in the ba- uh, the black economy. Now, I've been actually in Durban. That's why I'm going to compare COJ with um, Teguin. I've been in Durban, and I saw that uh, the Muti market was an actual very vibrant place in terms of the, the culture that goes around there. You occupy a space, obviously, not just occupying space just for the fun of it. No, you're occupying space with a certain eye for either business or you'd rather identify that space with what you what you're doing what you're selling so street vending uh, in 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 the way i believe street vending would help will would help um you know supplement certain beliefs for example if i were going going to sell um at the multi market that's where traditional herbs and stuff are being sold. If I were going to sell something over there, it would be a, a point of representation. So what represents me or the space is me. And what I, why, what I am trying to show is my beliefs. No, I believe that this type of thing works for me. If I'm going to sell snake skins or... Um, Mapesh, what do you call these um, leopard leopard print skins? If I believe that this has to be one of my niches for the business or or for my leverage in the world, it 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 would give me a um, a sense of purpose. So yeah, it actually gives me a leverage a, a, or a certain identity in the world i mean everyone has a job although a lot of people don't like doing their jobs but any space has a job so and that job is serves a certain purpose so in street vending it's certain purpose that you will be doing something that is worthwhile to you which is why um i define that culture of having purpose between um the human space or street vending and the human belief thank you for your response Hotzo. and my second question is what do you think about the possible factors that influence human elements in relation to the street imageability and you asked me mostly about the possible factors that influence um, human elements in relation to street imageability Well, for one, I'd go straight to the one that I had, the culture, because um, although we might say it's a black-white colored thing, I I still believe it's more of a cultural thing. So now we're talking about street imageability. The elements of it are, sorry, are how we use um, the space. For example, um, from where I'm from, I'm from Msotra, Kasla, Mige. Whereas we use a sidewalk for multiple things except walking. We do not walk on the sidewalk unless a huge, um, a huge 
reserve has been made for a sidewalk. If there's not enough space to walk on, then why the heck should I walk on it? However, when I was, uh, when I'm always at my uncle's place in the northern suburbs, no, in the southern suburbs, there are sidewalks everywhere, everywhere, literally everywhere. Even in internal roads, you'll find sidewalks. So basically, in comparison to the two, um, the human element of culture, um, whereas most people don't really do or go to work, that's that's the sad, unfortunate part of it. They don't really uh, do most uh, most of anything, you know, during the day. So they'd rather be sitting on um, the grass, the lawns that they created, and you know, there is no um, pathway for. For, for for a sidewalk but they have created um, large green grasses outside um, and you know they personify their own yards beyond their own walls so from the street to the house that's only identifiable patterns for example if there's green grass from the street um, paving up until the or the wall of the house that that's that's how they um, personify their house as a green area however in the southern suburbs where you'd find sidewalks nearly everywhere you th- th- there's a limit to how where you, you 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 can personify your personalize personalize your your work for or your what do you call this the image of your house I mean, since not many people really pass by these places, they actually, yes, they do have green grasses, beautiful, um, exotic uh, trees that you could see outside, but then no one is sitting on those lawns because the road reserve has actually been, you know, um, um, I don't know, can I say zoned or given for something else instead of just being done whereas people can just sit. So it's uh, most, of, most of what I can put it up as is that it's more of structurally um, against how, how, how we are being doing this thing. What's, what's this thing? Um, it's mostly structured around how we do um, structures around the places. For example, this is why uh, um, certain things are not built because certain structures are built around trends. That's what actually spatial planning is around. So if they know that people don't really sit on benches or, or on the sidewalk, then they will create a sidewalk that prevents more sitting, you understand? But if they see Uti, the um, you know the majority of people really sit Ekasi, because of a trend and a culture, they will not bother doing doing um, any more sidewalks because that's you know that's a flaw that you're just not designing something that's really in the context of the place. You understand, which is why I'm compar- comparing the southern western township to the southern suburbs, which have very different um, um, uh, what do you call? Uh, uses in terms of culture and also the human element I was I did talk about personal personalizing the street I remember in 2010 when we were kids um, in Soweto in Soweto when we were kids in 2010 we'd literally get paint from everywhere and start drawing on the gravel on the on the, on the floor and we I don't think any regulation was against us Actually, obviously there is, but we, we there was no regulation against us because what what point would it give? What who you know big conglomerates or big government trying trying to find fight people for painting on a gravel? They just didn't care. But go to the southern suburbs. I once saw this painter, this painter who was painting on the. Oh, what's these 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 sidewalks? Yeah, the curbs on the sidewalk. They dropped paint, and yeah, his boss went crazy. He was crazy. He was yay, malkak. 
and he just scolded at the guy for like okay five ten minutes straight just because so it wasn't because of he wasted material it looked more like he's defacing a certain structure that wasn't built for him you know, that wasn't built to be painted you understand which was the gravel in this sense so yeah that's that's another element which was uh, personalizing personalizing which is structured of course with culture you spoke a lot about personalizing sidewalks from black townships and suburban or white townships so do you think like you may believe play a role in the formation of street vending um now do i think that human beliefs play a role in formation of street vending yes actually yes um you know there are unwritten laws the unwritten rules around how how street vending is for example if i have a a a what's this a, a yard and i am mostly a, a really entrepreneurial person and i really don't care about the laws of 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 south africa and i could just increase my density and add people and outside my boundary walls i can just add more people who will sell stuff they pay rent to me so that's my belief that i'm unstoppable i i'm a money making machine so that's number one that's that i believe that that's that's a possible thing so another belief is that um i do not trust there's another i don't know if i say it's a belief but it's more emotionally connected whereas it's it's actual trust if i do not trust that you can do the right things no that's why i do not hire people um or put people as my street vendors because i believe that you no know, these people uh they create um a noise they create a lot of foot traffic they create other stuff that aren't really aligned with my beliefs i don't like people so basically if i don't like people i won't like seeing them more often so that's a belief of mine and i'd like to keep it that way so that's why i'm cutting a lot of people loose by saying no street vending on this town this is how most structural policies and stuff like that are made you understand so yeah that 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 would rather be it as to human beliefs um for example even if you go to the cbd yeah rather cbd or if you go to so it's in para there's a lot of street vending that happens in places like that and you are you see yes there is a certain coordination however they do not coordinate to my beliefs whereas i'm more of a clean person i'd like to see where my food comes from and i'd like to see very sanitary conditions and i'm like no no street vending is not for me so i'd like it eradicated off the street off this alleyway or something like that you understand but if i'm a person who just believes that no people are people and if we are made by people we will do things for the people we will co- collaborate with each other and you know find a uh, common ground which is why uh, some of us are tinage yes thing is corporate siangena regardless of the sanitary conditions because we we have a certain belief as to even the types of street uh, food that they sell by the way i stay with scope on fit to you know um you know when you when you get to that cow's head you you destroy that thing you destroy that thing because that's a belief that that thing gives you powers it used to be actually thing the uh, folklore actually whereas you are told that if you eat this you are connecting with your ancestors i still don't know why cuz i never questioned i'm part of the generation that actually never questioned stuff like this but you know because i imbue that that uh, belief within me i just take it and run and be like no i'm with my ancestors because i'm carrying this and i have this you understand yeah um this is interesting and i can relate where the beliefs are imposed in us and we don't have to question them but we believe at the end of the day 
Yeah, it is interesting. Um, my fourth question is, what are, what are your thoughts on street vending instead as people perceive it? I think it's also part of the belief or what people they've seen. So what's your take on this one? So in terms of what my thought on street vending is dead, when people said what street vending is dead and people or as people perceive it, wow. Well, I think it depends on where you're from. Um, it depends on where you're from. If you're from a destitute area where as you, you know, education hasn't gotten you further than you already are you'd obvious a lot of people actually still go to street vending and say you know although it's it looks more like the bottom of the barrel it's still a, 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 um, a, an income it's still an entrepreneurial venture so i would look at it that way however um i have cousins who yes are from my uncle's side uh, live in the southern suburbs they do not they do not they would not in their lives go through street vending areas because yes they're dirty number one and they seem pretty dodgy because the types of people that you beat there yeah they don't really give that type of comforting vibe even if even if you would try to give it the benefit of the doubt you'd still have that belief imbued with you that no cleanliness is next to godliness so dirtiness, no man, it's more of a malevolent force that's coming to get me. So no, 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 no. That's why uh, they, 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 they just uh, perceive it as a wrong thing or a malevolent thing, you understand? So yeah, um, and perception, like I said, it depends on where you're from um, or what you want. If you try to use it, as a tool for some sort uh, a tool for money making it's a good thing however if you try to use it or actually perceive it as something that's really really wrong you're more likely to do crime in that place but either way it's 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 actually f from a perspective or a context of a person's background whoever said that has to have a background not all of us do not all of us say this we we we, we don't fall for this that dirtiness is, is is bad no we don't fall for stuff like this i think we're mature enough to admit that the informal sector in itself is dirty and is uh mostly street vending actually it is mainly street vending but my point is it's it's way more richer than you know the formalized areas i don't care how much kfc makes in a day but they still have to pay taxes after that so we have to look at it the bigger picture instead of trying to look at what um, street vending lays its its roots upon. You understand? Yeah. Thank you for your for your response. My last question is: with the knowledge you have acquired from URP, urban and regional planning, what could be done to protect positive image of a street where there is a presence of street? Vending. Now, with the knowledge that I've acquired from URP, you asked me on what could be done to protect positive, the positive image of a street where there is presence of street vending. Wow. Eh, 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 eh. Okay. Oh, what I what I really liked is the planning system that advocates and promotes for 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 those that you you, you would for those that are technically marginalized. Now, marginalized in a context of a city, not in a context of, you know, the general area. I mean, if you're destitute, if you do not have um, other means of making it, and here's a platform, here's where you can sell. Um, to fix that old dirtiness that people perceived, we can just use uh, elements of cleaning up. And I'm not talking about monetary wires. You remember in, um, was it Tanzania? Oh, I can't remember that country, but that country actually did um, wonders by cleaning, forcing, or not forcing, but rather implementing mandatory cleanups by the citizens instead of them um, actually doing it themselves. Because obviously that costs a lot of money in itself. So if we, we were trying to look at it this way, whereas we wanted 
to to get a a certain response a positive response from 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 people or from the street vendors themselves we'd have to hold them accountable instead of them being dependent on on a uh, structure of the government for example waiting for the refuse removal you wait for 30 days and still not get your refuse removal this is south africa papa so it's not going to be uh, all sunshine and rainbows you understand but if you make them accountable you work uh, while still advocating for them you work with them i think things would be better so this would create um for example i i know most street vending happens on sidewalks and alleyways in both these places you can enforce cleanliness make it a mandatory thing cleanliness next to your store that would um you know lessen the perception of outsiders and outsiders i'm t- i'm talking about people who who are really eh, shaken by the 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 the, 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 um, the dirtiness that they see surrounding these places you know if you associate these places now with cleanliness they'd be more open to now revealing themselves and saying no this is not really bad you understand so yeah there's the number one yeah that was the number one and the uh, number two of it would be coordination now not the coordination that if i was a planner trying to enforce policemen everywhere no they must enforce and oversee themselves like i said accountability is everything in this manner if if an outsider was to come and to monitor me and my family no man that wouldn't really work because that's not morally that's that that, that has nothing to do with you know trying to keep us in check you're now trying to put us under your foot and that's not why we're trying to you don't you can't really expect us to really follow you after that because you now you now being strict about it and not giving me the type of power that I could use myself you understand so yeah and number 3 would be to let them be would be a no holds barred situation whereas i could not even try to formalize you even if i could cuz the street vending is informal they exist because there's too much formalities that they have to go through number 1 um but there's still a lot of liberation they don't have to pay taxes because taxes still undercut them and destroy their lives slowly so although they uh, um you know a modern day person can't see it any economist can actually see that this is a decaying society because the tax is really 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 undercutting the people right so that's 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 where i'm going with this um so yeah that's 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 how i think street vending can be helped um to better the street vending because the status quo i'm i i i mean a lot of people would disagree with me as to you know you see this this is not this is not how you do it but you know the the status quo right now is that we we have we have to understand where we we where we're trying to get the status quo is general cleanliness that's one of the tenets of sustainability that's how we keep our infrastructure running cleanliness instead of having blockages on just a common a common um storm water drain finding that it's blocked because of tissue papers or 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 you know cups just mean things that you can just throw in the bin that isn't that isn't that just so simple you understand So if we can attack that and attach it with um a form of a form of uh, uh, integrated into a belief system that that people can now agree upon then say no man this is common ground this can actually work for us it could work for everyone else so that's good for us you understand so that's how i'm seeing this it it could definitely work